I saw an art in stonework and I wanted to be part of it. When I was little, I watched my dad kind of fix the uh, walls on the, this small farm that we had. But I never thought really I was going to be doing this for a living. I just took a workshop and uh, at the end of the day, uh, they asked me if I had a project, do I want to be part of it? I said, sure, why not? So uh, like two months later, you know, they called me that they had a project in, in, in Denver and, and, and from there I've been doing it ever since. We're a non-profit uh, organization, the Dry Stone Conservancy, and um, we're training uh, students, uh, stonemasons, and uh, all over the country. Cecil um, is one of the, um, the protégés of the Dry Stone Conservancy. He actually started, I remember, training Cecil 12 years ago as a trainee, and he's now at master level. It's been a really nice process to actually see trainees develop uh, their skills, not only in their business, but also in the, the skills that they have in their fingertips. Uh, the Dry Stone Conservancy have three tiered level of certification. They have the basic level, which Cecil got uh, many years ago, and the journeyman level, and they also is a master level now. And that has qualified them now to be also an instructor. This is just a typical field stone. Some of this stone is hard. Uh, but it still kind of gives a way where we can trim it where we want it to. Uh, rocks are really not perfect. Uh, there's a lot of people that try to make them perfect, but, <laughs> but they're not. I mean, uh, especially with old stone, it's really hard to make something real pretty. But if we can put it all together at the end, you can see that it's still a beautiful well, it's not, you know, it's, there's not squares or anything like that, but it's still a beautiful natural wall. And that's what I'm really uh, looking for. He does such a nice job. It's functional, and some of it's just kind of for aesthetics. It kind of is true to the, you know, the history of, of this area. So um, it's, either way, it's, uh, you know, it helps um, with, the look of the farm and beautifies everything. It goes fast if you can really pick up a rock and use that rock. You know, I've seen a lot of uh, guys that I work with, especially when we do the dry stone conservancy, and you know, they'll pick up the same rock 10 times for some reason, I don't know. I mean, to me, you know, I pick up a rock, I either use it or bust it just had to, uh, you know, kind of do it over and over, you know, and kind of train you mind that, you know, this is the shape or size that you need for that particular, you know, space. <laughs> There's so many stone walls in, uh, in Kentucky, and the Scots and Irish were responsible for building uh, the majority of them. Dry stone masonry typically has no mortar and no cement and it's where the two stones have the stone-to-stone -stone contact and the friction and gravity are the two main fundamentals in dry stone work. The Parklands is a system of parks, and it's a system of four very large parks. Each park has its own personality, and we think that's very important because that's the Olmsted tradition of parks really speak to their strengths. You want to celebrate local architecture whenever you build a park, and you want the architecture to be timeless. Nothing says Kentucky or even the bluegrass region quite like these stone walls. And it's really one of our, our real capturing moments of folks when they see the wall, they'll know they're in a special place and they'll know they're in the park. So we place them where folks will notice. So we work with the Dry Stone Conservancy to install about 3,000 linear feet. That's over a half mile throughout the whole park. We build the uh, 740 feet of uh, freestanding walls at the playground the parklands of Floyd Ford. We're also going to build a lot of retaining walls for the culverts. We've worked in um, probably about 21 different National Park Service uh, projects uh, in my time with the Dry Stone Conservancy, uh, of which uh, Cecil's been with us on quite a few of these projects. 
So it's not all in the Kentucky, there's a lot of traveling involved. My kids are really little and you know, they already started watching me. One day I'm going to be able to take them to Washington, D.C., New York or Florida, you know, California, all those places that, uh, that the people brought me to do, you know, something for them. And I say I work on that and, you know, that'd be kind of special for me. This is what I really, you know, like to do. Uh, I mean, I got pictured of uh, uh, the first wall that I built my, the day that I took the workshop. And, uh, <laughs> you know, compared to what I'm able to, you know, do now is, is, uh, is really a maze, but. With Cecil, I do feel that there is an incredible passion. There is a natural ability. He loves what he's doing. His brother and his father have joined them as well uh, in the business. And uh, these guys are absolutely amazing. They'd worked with me very loyally for so long. A few years ago at a competition, they gave them an award for the dedication that the whole family had actually given the Drystone Conservancy. At the end of the day, I built something and I know it's going to stay there for a long time. Uh, being part of a craft that has been around for, you know, thousands of years, even before he came to America, to be part of uh, one of the oldest uh, traits that America have is, is really, is really special.